just said, I love this food talk. Love well, food it, talk. it's good because we're talking food with our next guest. You probably recognize him. Celebrity chef Rene Rodriguez, an owner of Navarra, joins us on the show. Welcome. Great to have you here. Thank you for having me. We're talking tapas mm -hmm. and canola oil in particular on today's That's show. That's correct, right? yes. But yeah. you've got, it looks like you've brought a bottle of canola oil here that's, you know, not the usual grocery store one that, that we might use, That right? is correct. So the benefits of canola oil is that you can have it for frying, like deep frying, and you can also have it for finishing a plate, like a cold okay. press extra virgin canola oil, right? So this is a cold press um, extra virgin canola oil, which is great for finishing plates or soup or even a, as a dressing for a salad. And you also have the other kind of canola which is used for frying, like we have right now, these potatoes. Right. And canola oil health benefits are really great for you because um, they have a lot of uh, omega-3 acids as well. Right. And they have a high smoking point, which means that the oil won't get burned even if it's cranked up really high. Which right? can yeah. happen with olive, olive oil. oil. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. And the best part of this is that canola oil is grown in Canada. And one fact is that uh, only 2% only 2% of all Canadians are farmers all across Canada. My family grows canola oil in Saskatchewan. What? Big fields of You're it. Kidding. It's Huge the fields, prettiest yeah. thing. I, I remember saying, look, why is that so pretty? It's very pretty before it becomes yeah. oily. <laughs> the plant is beautiful. It yeah. is. It is. And yeah. uh, not only that, but it's also close to home, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Which means um, less uh, carbon footprint, and it's actually something that we can support our local farmers. And uh, now it's been, you know, like it's been shipped, you know, all across, you know, different countries because not only the health benefits, also a good price point, but also different grades like this one, extra virgin cold press, and then you have like the one for frying, and it's getting better and better. So yeah. olive oil is great, but if you can keep it closer to home to a, a big degree, it's actually even better. Hard nice. to believe 2% yeah. of the population are farmers. You know, if you go back 60 years ago, that percentage is much higher. What, probably 50, I mean, like this country was, was an agricultural yeah. country, mm -hmm. right, for, yeah. for so many years. Absolutely, and um, now that I'm, I'm using canola more oil at the restaurant for my tapas, because you know, not only you can also manipulate the oil and make it flavorful. Like as you can okay. see here, because it's very neutral when you use it for frying, I infuse it with a clove of garlic. Right. Oh, so yes. what I do, I shallow fry my potatoes in the oil, okay. and then you fry them. And the potatoes have been part boiled, so you want to make them crispy on one side, and you just fry them, fry them, and then you get give them a the nice, you know, crunchy texture. So this is a traditional dish it's called patatas bravas in Spain. Patatas right? bravas. Bravas. Okay. So it's made with olive oil. So what I've done, I've taken the liberty of using canola oil to make this tapas dish. So I made like a mayo with um, some, you know, yellow chili paste and used uh, canola oil instead of olive oil. And also I'm frying the potatoes in canola oil. So you get two different uh, flavors from the actual frying and from the mayo as well. Very cool. Wow. I like yeah. it. So what is a tapas? A tapas in, in Spain is, is something that is a very small portion okay. and it means lit, right? Like a lid on something. So back in the day, they would give you a beer or a glass of wine and they put a small plate or a lid on top of your wine to prevent the flies from getting in your drink and they put a piece of food on top of that. Oh, so like the that. original idea was like tiny little bites right. served on a lid or something, a little plate on top of your glass of wine or your beer. And that's all came about. We're talking about hundreds of years ago, right? So that is so now cool. Now it's crazy, yeah. <laughs> I love that idea. <laughs> I'm going to do that. I actually put a thing on my wine, you know, when there's mosquitoes yeah. and stuff. And sometimes I'm having wine while I'm getting ready and I put a lid so I don't get the hairspray in. <laughs> Too much information. Yeah, there. we'll be talking about that <laughs> after the show. You, you can need okay. you some help. But I do the lid. The lid, I like right. that. So what did you just spread on the on the plate? That's here? a red pepper uh, paste that we use at the restaurant. It's made with um, a type of pepper. It's called Beautiful. the piquillo pepper from Spain. Okay. And um, what I do, as you can see, the potatoes gently fry on one side. This is like Stonehenge you're building. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then what I do is um, I have this mayo that we have with the canola oil as well. And you just put that on top of the potatoes, just like so just to slightly glaze them. And as you know, Derek, it's all about presentation. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, it's so pretty. This is, looks like last time I had dinner at Catherine's. This is kind of what she did. I tried. But a lot different. <laughs> and then a little bit of um, <laughs> Spanish uh, chorizo as well. <laughs> And okay. then, um, so that. do you? Do you? I know you do a you source, of course, as much local as possible. But you do at Navarra have that that Spanish flair, which you which you absolutely love from your, your culture. Do you do you source things from Spain as well and bring them in? What you can't get here locally? We do, like especially when it comes to the cheeses. You know, like right. some, some some types of cheeses that I like to use from Spain, like manchego. Yes, that has to be brought in, and also uh, like different some different kinds of ham, like you know serrano ham and uh, stuff like that. That has to be brought in. But I try to keep a good balance, you know, I try to look to use, you know, like some products from, you know, from our backyard, you know, like Canadian products. And whatever I cannot get, I bring in, 
And I try to stay, you know, like a lot of organic stuff as well, you know, when it comes to using my ingredients. And that makes the food that much better. Right. right. So when you do something like this, like tapas, is that meant to be sort of the, the starter, the appetizer? Because that can't be a meal. No, it's, it's not a meal. It's something that you order three or four and you share at the table. Oh, I like yeah. that. So it has to be like this, as you can see, because it's easy to pass around the table. You grab one or two, you eat. So it has to be shareable. It cannot be a piece of you know, roast beef on a plate. You can't <laughs> right. pass it around. Don't right? touch right. my roast beef. <laughs> <laughs> so you like can do a few slices of, of something like something that. Something like right? this, wow. you can you can pass around and you can share and then you can order more. So, that's so you can taste a lot of different things when you do it that way. You can order many different things and then share them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I like and that. That's the beauty of that, you know, like, you know, like bring it back to the table in family tradition, you know, and sharing rather than having your own main course and being that bubble. When you have tapas, you can share and, you, and, and engage it for a better conversation. For yeah. sure. Well, like when you that. go out to dinner, let's say, you know, just two couples out to a restaurant, it's great to have those tapas, small plates to share. Opens up conversation, right, as Absolutely. well? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the beauty of that. Yeah. So since you're a big win, yes. you, you won the, the, the big kitchen, now, but you have not wow. implemented the kitchen yet, correct? No, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Any, I know you might have plans, but you might not want to share them. But uh, are you? Are they waiting top secret? These yeah. plans? No, no, they're not okay. top secret. All right. You might have. We talk before the show. No, no, Derek, no. I just check. You gotta check before I, we get on live on live television. That's why I set it up like that. So, do you have plans? Yes, I do. I think in the new year, uh, it's a massive kitchen that I want to put in a in a warehouse and uh, relocate in the bar into a bigger location with this okay. kitchen because it's a state of the art kitchen. It's all stainless steel, all you know, like top top of the line. Beautiful. And the kitchen has to be part of the stage, right? Part of the show. Right. So therefore, you know, finding a bigger space, some sort of like a warehouse that the kitchen could be put in the background, like an open kitchen, and people can see it and, you know, even put a table close to the kitchen as well. So. Nice. nice because like that, that. you have the open concept at Navarra. Yep, what do absolutely. you like about that idea? I, li I like the idea that you can, you know, you can say hi to your customers, they can see you, and they like that, you know, because yeah. it creates that there's no, there's no um, separation, it's all together, right? And I think people like that, you know. I like that. Chef, you know? I, like I do too. I like to be able to see what's going on with, because it's my food. Right, absolutely. It sounds a bit strange, yeah. but it's my food. I like to see what's happening and how it's getting prepared. And exactly. Who's yeah. doing it? There's something nice <laughs> who's about making that. It, yeah. Yeah. Have you switched up the menu at Navarre at all, moving into fall, winter? Yes, we do. So every three months, we change like some of the dishes just to bring, you know, like you know, just to play with the seasons, you know, as, as right. you know, as, as you know, we chefs like to do that kind of thing. But. Um, yeah, it's always fun. I mean, you know, you, you've been there. We should go. Yeah, a, Monica oh. and you and Oh, Shana. we should go. We should go, and the it, four of us. It is a beautiful restaurant, and next summer, you have to go to the patio. It's okay. the most intimate patio in the city. It's beautiful. One of my, it was my first date with Monica at a restaurant. Was at Okay, Navarro. so you we do good things, place. clearly. He does. He brings love together. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, there you go. Renee, thank, thank you so thank much you. for joining us. Thank you, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Really thank appreciate you so much. it. Uh, we have another great show for you tomorrow. Okay. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you then. We're going to do mm -hmm. a little taste test. Absolutely. I'm tasting this.